The truth about teabagging in Overwatch. Hey, it's Prince of Queens, and just when you thought that the Gamergate style, everything is sexist, nonsense was officially over and never coming back, we get to be reminded yet again that many of these idiotic publications and journalists are still in business coming up with absurd and nonsensical ways to call gaming sexist, proving beyond a shadow of a doubt that even if they did maybe have a bit of a point sometimes, they also have no idea what they are talking about. This time they are talking about Overwatch, a game that I completely love and still play almost every night, despite the fact that I'm getting kind of tired of it and really need to learn how to actually play Monster Hunter and Destiny 2. Regardless, I guess some professional Overwatch player teabagged another professional player, and the gaming press, being what they are, had the nerve to go ahead and write numerous articles about the in-game act, talking about how it could be considered sexual assault in video games. Or something. Teabagging, in real life, is what happens when somebody squats and puts their balls on somebody else's face, likely usually at frat parties when guys are passed out. I believe the term was popularized by the John Waters 1998 movie Pecker, which had a male stripper at a bar and somebody yelled, teabag him or teabag her, and he did the thing to the person. From there, it probably became more common practice and used as slang, probably mostly at frat parties like I mentioned, and then eventually became used to describe an arrogant, non-sportsmanship-like insult between online gamers, which I believe people mainly started noticing with the game Halo. And here's where you have to understand the history and evolution of games for any of this to make sense. You see, in current games like Overwatch, you can do what is called an emote, which are actual things programmed into the game where your character will do little animated routines for a brief moment. However, for most of gaming history, such things didn't exist. In early first-person shooters, you couldn't even squat, actually. Eventually, Back in the days of early Halo, the only thing you could do to gloat over a kill was to crouch up and down really quickly. You see, when you die, in most games, you get to see your dead body for a few seconds immediately after you're dead. So if you are particularly proud of a kill, sometimes people decide to crouch up and down to brag about their kill. Now, did this start with a sexual connotation? Well, I don't know who the first person was to do this, but I think it's safe to assume that it didn't. People did it probably because it was basically the only way to signify triumph in a digital video game. I mean, seriously, what else are you going to do to say, neener, neener? Half the time, people aren't even talking to their teammates on headsets let alone their opponents. Eventually, people more than probably noticed that squatting up and down was not dissimilar to the act of teabagging, and then the nickname stuck around as a result of that. It's not some sexually predatory behavior that snuck its way into gaming. Most of the time, when people teabag, they are not within even three feet of the dead body. You'd have to actually play video games to know this, of course, but now would be a great time to remind people of the fact that a huge percentage of game journalists are not actually even real gamers, which honestly any real gamer can probably tell you because they know that game journalism is crap, which is why you can't get any good game reviews. You never know if a game is really going to be good or not. It's almost as if people are paid to give it a positive review or not paid at all. (laughs) But I'm not really going to get into all of that. All I'm here to do is tell the truth about teabagging. And the truth is that when it happens to you, it sucks. It sucks really hard. But not because teabagging is a horrifying act of sexual assault in real life, which is why so many take extreme offense to its representation in video games which is what they said in the publication Inverse. 
Rather, it's just a cocky insult from somebody that isn't being a good sport. So hey, you can take my word for it or not, but this is not something that people think of sexually. People think of it as a super cocky insult done to them at a time when they were already frustrated as they had just died. You can ask my main female friend that I play with what she thinks of the insult. Shout out to Drothis. I would bet money that she'll tell you what I'm telling you, which is that she doesn't get mad because somebody did something sexual. She's mad because they did that to her and they thought that they could get away with it. Like as if they think that they're so much better than our team and that we're not going to come back and kill them a bunch of times and win the game. Furthermore, if somebody teabags Drothis, who, by the way, they wouldn't know was female from her scream name, and she says to us, oh crap, Reaper just teabagged me. We'll all say, who? Which one? And then we'll come after the enemy Reaper extra hard for the rest of the game, because they obviously think they are hot stuff. Now, are we more defensive of Drothis because she's female? I'm not sure. But mostly? No! We're mad because we are semi-serious gamers that play at an above-average ranking, and so if somebody teabags any of our teammates, we take it as an insult to our entire team, and we want revenge. The same would go if they teabagged Lucas, or Andre, or Mika, or Burn, or Sin, or Michael, or Toxic, or even one of the randoms that we don't normally play with, or even somebody that I don't even really like all that much that one of my friends is friends with. We get mad because it's an insult to everyone on the team. Not because it's gross.